This guide is meant for students who've just finished their IGCE and ready to start their A-level chemistry. We will have an overview of this subject. We will look at the exam papers and I will show you tips that will help you throughout the year in your A-level chemistry. This overview is taken from IAL at Excel Chemistry. However, the topics here apply for all exam boards. AS Chemistry is divided into two main units, Unit 1 and Unit 2. The third unit is the one where you apply practicals from both of the previous units. Unit 1 is divided into four main blocks. The first part is about electron configuration, where you study atomic structure. The second block is about bonding, where you study ionic, metallic, and covalent bonds. The third part is about periodic trends. Here you study how properties change along the periodic table. The last part of Unit 1 is about organic chemistry. Here you study hydrocarbons like alkanes and alkenes and their chemical reactions. Unit 2 is also made of four blocks. Organic chemistry of Unit 2 studies about alcohols and halogenoalkanes. There's a large part in Unit 2 about energetics. The third part talks about Group 2 and halogens in the periodic table. And the last part of Unit 2 talks about chemical equilibrium. Unit 3 is the practical unit. It has questions about practicals from both Unit 1 and Unit 2. I want to stress on something important related to AS chemistry, which is stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is a major part of all three units of the exam. So that's why the very first thing you should work on is this part of the syllabus, because you'll have questions about stoichiometry, the mole concept, the calculation part of chemistry. You'll have questions about it in all three units exams. Now let's take a look at the exam papers. Unit 1 exam is worth 40% of your overall for AS chemistry. Unit 1 exam is organized into two sections. Section A is the multiple choice questions and section B is the written answer. The total mark for the unit 1 exam is 80. Just like unit 1, unit 2 is also worth 40%. Unit 2 exam is organized into three sections. You still have section A for the multiple choice questions, 20 questions. You have section B for written answers. Section C involves questions taken from both unit 1 and unit 2. Unit 3 is only worth 20% of your overall. Unit 3 is the practical part of AS chemistry. It involves four questions. Those four questions are taken from practicals from unit 1 and unit 2. For those of you who are applying for their exam soon, you can take all of your exams in one session. But for me, I ask my students to do one exam in January or in October, it depends, and the other two exams to take in May and June. This would help to divide the effort. Plus, it helps the students to get to know the exams first in January, and it gives them a chance to improve their grades in May and June session. Based on my experience teaching this subject for the past 20 years, I want to show you some tips on how you can study AS chemistry in an effective way. We're gonna go in steps, starting from the beginning in the lesson until you prepare for your final exam. It all starts with the explanation. This could come from your school teacher or from an online session. But you have to make sure of the following. First of all, the lesson has to be somehow exam oriented, has to be related to your exam board. So during the lesson, there should be some solving of questions that are related to your exam. Like in this case, I'm solving questions related to molecular shapes from unit one of AS chemistry. The explanation should also involve the experiment. Chemistry is a practical science. So you should do these experiments in hand or at least watch simulations of the experiments. The second part of the learning process depends on you. You need to revise what you've learned from your teacher. This usually requires having notes. Chemistry largely depends on understanding. However, you still need to memorize a lot of things. 
including definitions. They do ask you a lot of times to write definitions straight from the textbook. This is why I put the definitions separate with special bullet points in my notes so that it becomes easy for you to realize that these definitions are important for your exam. You also need to memorize the formulae. These are have to be ready in your mind so you can always rearrange them based on the exam question. Once you're done learning the content, you need to start applying your knowledge by solving classified exam questions. While solving, highlight your mistake to avoid doing them next time. Use the mark scheme as a learning tool while solving. However, mark schemes may not show you the complete working out. This is why I write the answers for my students to show them the full explanation of the answer. This is quite very helpful when it comes to multiple choice questions because the mark scheme will only tell you whether the answer is A, B, C or D. But in my case, I write the answer and I also show the reason why the answer is B, for instance. The next step in the learning process is to link up different topics that you have learned. I tend to make mind maps like the one we have here, which links up all of the organic chemistry from unit one. This would help the students to link different topics with one another. Many of the exam questions test your ability to write answers where the question is asking you about it from many different topics. Once you're done with the entire subject, it's time to solve full exam papers. Now, solving full exam papers goes over three steps. Step number one is the one when you're still taking it slow and you're still using your notes while you're solving. Once you're ready, once you feel more confident, it would be the time to solve questions, but you give yourself more time because you're still learning the content. You're still trying to link up all of the topics that you've learned in this specific unit. The very last part is to write full exams and you give yourself specific time. Ideally, you need to finish the exam 10 or 15 minutes before the allocated time. It's very important to keep two to three exam papers that you haven't done before. And those are the ones that you will give to yourself as a mock exam. Those are the ones that will help you to show your true ability to solve full exam papers. I hope that this was helpful. If you still have questions, feel free to email me your questions and I'll try to answer you as soon as possible.